there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. This area here that's kind of blank is where I typically sew, and I had my machine actually in my filming room where it's heated to make a bunch of masks this weekend, and I thought while I have the machine out, I think I will reorganize this area to make it a little bit more functional and have all of my uh, notions at hand. Those purple drawers up there, I recently pretty much emptied, and I thought they would be nice if I put them in the white cabinet there and put my, um, you know, bits and bobs and notions that I currently have amongst my fabric in that metal chest of drawers over there. That way the metal drawers can just be for fabric and I have lots of little random um, bins with like bobbins and fray check and elastics and stuff and I just want to get everything into one place. My daughter also uses this space and it would just be nice for whoever wants to come down sit and sew to be able to find everything. So I will take you along as I organize and set this up. Okay, so I moved one of the little shelves here and I put my purple drawers in there. I used alcohol to remove the lettering on or the labeling on my drawers because I use um, dry erase markers to label them. And I'm just starting to compile the things that are not fabric here from threads, bias tape, marking chalk, zippers, that sort of thing. And as I'm going through here, I'm noticing that I have weird stuff in my sewing things. I've got these huge home decor tassels. I have, um, you know, metallic threads that I actually use for card making more than I do sewing and other little, like, embellishment things that I'm definitely not going to use sewing, although they could be used for costuming. I gotta decide what I'm going to do with some of these oddballs, um, but that's where I am so far. Oh my gosh, look what I found! Oh my gosh, you always find new things or new to you things, things you bought that you forgot about when you're cleaning. I remember buying these um, fabric oil pastels at a little craft shop, a little art shop once. Um, oh my gosh, I've got to do something with these. They're so fun! So they're meant for like, actually I don't remember if you, if you draw on something and then you iron it to your project or if you draw on your project. I think you draw on paper and then you iron it. Um, but oh my gosh. Oh, I can't wait to use those. Those are so fun. Um, okay, I, I gotta get back to work, but you know, you get distracted by all the cool things. Well, I cleared out the bottom drawer and then I came across a bunch of fabric. Actually, they're curtains that I sewed for different areas of the house and then we've like replaced them. So um, I folded them up. I use them for backdrops for still lifes. And uh, that was just a stack of stuff sitting on top of that chest of drawers, of plastic drawers. So I folded it KonMari style so I can see every panel of fabric I have in there and get one out without disrupting the whole pile. Okay, I arranged this drawer. It's pretty much, I'm just leaving in these stacks of um, adhesive backed felt. I've got some white muslin that's pre-washed. I've got some interfacing that I just wrapped the kind of interfacing directions around it so I wouldn't lose it. And I've got fabric left over from lining my coat. I know I'll need to redo that project at some point, so I'm keeping that. And then I pulled out, uh, this drawer is in the other room, it's from Fat Quarters. Um, then I pulled out this other drawer of large panel fabric and it's kind of a mess because it looks like my daughter picked up that for herself and and I uh, just kind of shoved a bunch of scraps in there and I've got another box of uh, like notions and things. Oh another seam ripper. I swear they these are gold. I need to buy what did I pay for that? 88 cents. I need to stock up on seam rippers when I find them at a price that like that again because although maybe I won't lose them if they're more organized. So I'm gonna go through this drawer next and then I think actually the top drawer here is pretty well organized. Sorry for the shake. Um, yeah, this is all felt. This is all regular craft felt. Um, so that will probably stay the way it is. Maybe I'll refold it, but I feel like that's pretty good. I thought I was doing so good, but then I remembered that I had a bin that was in my closet that had more fabric. Actually, it's more curtains, it appears. Um, so I don't know if these are ever going to get used again. I mean, so I'm thinking that I might just put them into the fabric. And then I thought, what is that? Oh, you know what this is? My baby boy's gonna turn 18. That was one of his sweaters. Oh, I didn't make that. It was from The Gap. But isn't it cute? Oh my gosh. Okay, anyways, walk down memory lane. Oh, this is a, uh, yeah, never mind. Um, but I've got a bunch, I do have some fabric here for some aprons I was going to make with a pattern in there. Maybe I'll make those, I don't know. Um, I've got a pattern and some fabric for some shirts already cut out. I definitely should make those. They're probably completely out of style now. And I have this um, this crate that's full that has all my patterns in it. So I don't know if I should try to find room for those. I don't think they're tall enough to stand up in the 
in the drawers. They're definitely not. I could put them on their side if I had a clear drawer. I gotta think about this. Man, I'm telling you, if you just keep finding more things. I actually could probably go through because um, I'm probably not gonna sew any more baby or maternity clothes in my life. So, of course, I don't want to say that and jinx myself. I got three teenagers. I definitely don't want to jinx myself there. Um, gosh, so cute. I don't know if the camera can even pick that up. Oh, and so a couple iron-on patches. Boy, the uh, the stash keeps on giving, guys. Um, well, that's where we're at. I'll uh, I'll do something with it. Okay, so I've been putting away fabric, and I took the pattern out. How cute is that? How cute is that apron? I totally want to make that. And with this fabric and that trim, it was all pulled together, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago when I originally thought I was going to make aprons. I made an apron out of this, and that's my only apron, and I do wear it. Um, making bread occasionally, but uh, so that I don't feel like I need to use again for an apron project, but man, I think I need to make that 50s Happy Housewife apron and uh, and totally wear it around the house. I think that is super cute. So um, I'm going to keep this stuff all together and that might be my next project. I don't know. <laughs> Brief aside there, it's still looking pretty crazy and uh, messy here, but um, but I'm plugging away. I did decide to put my metallic thread in with my card making thread and I think I'll probably put my trims in with my ribbon because I have like several drawers of ribbon because I use it for other crafts. Might as well keep all my trims with my ribbon, I think. Um, we'll see you in a minute. See all right, I'm gonna go through this pile of scraps here. Anything that's big enough to make like a scrunchie out of, I'm just gonna fold it and tuck it into the, the rainbow order of my fat quarter storage here because um you know I, a lot of times when i'm doing a project i don't need a whole fat quarter i just need like a little bit of trim or you know if lila's putting a patch in behind a hole in a ripped a jean she's ripped or something it doesn't take a lot of fabric so as long as i can fold it into a neat and tidy squarish shape and i can con mari tuck it into one of these um these sections then i'm going to keep it because it can be it can be used and it'll be organized so things can be found. I'm not going to reorganize all this. As long as I can see stuff pretty well, I'm just going to leave it as it is. I mean, unless I see a color that's like, oh, that's green, that really should be, you know, over, then I will scooch it over. But other than that, I'm just going to, um, I'm not going to go look for trouble, basically. <laughs> I'm kind of overwhelmed, I'm not going to lie, which is probably hilarious to anybody who sews, because I'm sure you have way more stuff than I do, but um, I'm just trying to figure out how to categorize everything. Uh, and I did, did I show you this? That I found like five seam rippers, so I definitely got to make sure one of those goes in the little tray under my sewing machine. <laughs> you know, the little tray, the way you bobbins go and stuff, and the pressure feet, um, because I can never seem to find one when I need it. Um, it seems like I'm going to have plenty of room to store everything in those little purple drawers and above. Um, I have this top, the top drawer over there, right here, um, I did fill up pretty quickly because I knew I'd want this for taller things because the other ones have a limited height. So I have all my bias tapes in here and I've got my uh, spools of thread that don't fit in this spool box or on my, um, on my display in my filming studio where I have all my colorful ribbon uh, spools of thread and their bobbins. Um, so these are backups like blacks and whites and reds, things that I go through more often. And I've got one of my pin cushions here and I've got some pins. I did find more pins, so I'm gonna actually, I think I'll take the pins out and organize those all together. Um, I think the top drawer I wanna have for cutting tools like scissors and rotary cutters because those I use the most. Um, and beyond that, I'm just going to kind of go from most important to least important because the bottom drawer doesn't open very well. So I'm putting stuff I don't use very often in there, like um, Velcro rolls. And because I can get to it, but it's just, I'm like with purse snaps and regular snaps and hook eyelet hooks, hook, hook and eyes, um, and then Velcro, stuff like that that doesn't need to be accessed every single time I sew. Uh, because that is such a bizarre drawer, it doesn't want to open anytime. It doesn't matter how I configure those drawers, whatever one's on the bottom does not want to open well. Um, so I'm just going to put stuff in the drawers and then I'll check back with you and show you how it turned out. I was putting stuff away in my scissor drawer and I stabbed myself with some thread snips. So I'm going to put some band-aids in the uh, cutting tools drawer as well. Hey, can you guys help me out? I don't know what this thing is. It looks like it might hook onto um, a presser foot or the needle thing. I don't know. Is this like, um, is this a hem gauge or is this a rolled something to make rolled hems or a piping thing? 
If anybody knows what this is, can you let me know? I had it in the side bag of my sewing machine case, and I don't have a clue what this is. So if you can help me out, let me know. Thank you. I have an advent calendar that I saved, and I use it for buttons. And I was just going through the buttons that were in my little button box here that I made a long time ago with the crochet cherries. Isn't that cute? And I was like sorting through, and then I completely pulled a, a drawer out too far, and I dropped them and went everywhere. <laughs> I'm really, uh, really ready to be done this project, I think, but I'm going to sort these buttons, put them in the button box. The box slides right in here perfectly, so that's awesome. And I think the next time we check back, I'm going to have everything set up, and I'll show you what's in all the drawers. All right, I'm finally finished. Now it's not like beautiful or anything, but it does the trick. Over here, I'm trying to stay out of camera because I am a mess. Um, I put some of that non-skid um, uh, stuff, you know, shelf liner underneath the, cut the cutting mat there. And I just set this uh, ironing board on top of there because I didn't want to cram it in the corner over there next to the sewing machine because I don't really want um, anyone ironing over there. I don't think it's enough room. Uh, but then we've got this nice cutting area. I've got a little uh, ruler here. I've got my quilting rulers back there. Um, but this will just be set here for right now. Um, and then honestly, I think for ironing, you're better off putting it on the big bench to, um, you know, behind me to do the ironing. So let's move in a little bit closer. Oh, sorry. Uh, I got my machine there set up on the bench. I have the uh, pedal underneath. I put another piece. I'm going to move my real janky chair out of the way. I put another piece of um, the shelf liner underneath that pedal because it was always sliding around on the cement floor. Don't mind the paint splotches and no oh, random rubber stamp that's just floating around down there. Um, but that way I can, uh, you know, I can not have it slide around. And I don't know if it ever actually bothered Lila, but it does bother me. Um, not that much, clearly, because it took me forever to actually do that. So this next thing I'm going to show you, I kind of showed you when I spilled the buttons everywhere, but um, this was an advent calendar that my friend Renee Christine got me one year for Christmas. Uh, she has the hand mine Titan University, and um, you know, she used to be called Rich Mom U. Anyway, she has a YouTube channel. But I took, after the, um, the advent calendar was all used up, I just took a little, I don't know why I use these, probably because I just had them page, um, you know, the little page reinforcers, and I just kind of colored them with a marker to indicate what color button I had in the drawers, and I sorted all my buttons by color family and put them in there, and I just kind of, this is what I did for clear, just kind of did stripey blue things, because apparently that's clear in my mind, um, because I couldn't glue a button on the front of each drawer and be able to shut the doors. But I figured that'd be really handy because it's it fits right there. I use these for scrapbooking, card making, as well as sewing. So it's right there, easy to get to. And then we've got our cabinets over here. So the top one is um, things that are other that are too tall for the drawers. So all my bias tape and um, hem tape, piping, things like that. My fabric paints, which I don't have a lot of. Surplus. Uh, spools of uh, thread like blacks and whites and cream that don't fit in my uh, spool organization in my other room or in the little yellow thing there. Um, also fabric pens so they could lay flat and um, that's pretty much it for that drawer. That's my tall one. Oh to the side I put my quilting rulers here which are really handy to use with a cutting board there with the rotary cutter. And in the top drawer I have my most used things, my cutting tools, my rotary cutters, my pinking shears, and my regular uh, fabric scissors and thread scissors, and some band-aids because, huh, you know, that's where the sharp things live. And here I have more sharp things actually. These are all uh, needles. I have a lot of yarn needles because I got a bunch on sale because I used to teach kids uh, knitting classes. And then I've got uh, embroidery needles for uh, embroidery floss and also plastic canvas, which my kids used to like to do. They don't do so much anymore. I've got a variety of different needles for like upholstery and different projects. I got replacement sewing machine needles. These things are gold. Needle threaders for hand sewing. I hope I'm staying in, in frame. I think I am. I think so. Um, and I've got, a, I found quite a few of those actually throughout my travels. A bunch of thimbles and um, yeah, just like hand sewing and embroidery and yarn needles. And I do have more yarn needles in with my own personal knitting stash, but here I have pins and um, some heat and bond. So it's basically things to attach things. So I got the pins, I got the iron on, um, stitch witchery stuff. I've got this little thing with some like eyelets and pins and snaps and stuff. And uh, just some big random safety pins, like kilt pins. Those are just straight pins. I have, my, I have a pin cushion up here. Um, I want to go through it though, and I've been trying to throw away bent pins as I come across them, because they can lead to trouble. 
Um, I have all my bobbins here. Now, I went on eBay and I bought a thing of 100 bobbins for actually for some um, lampwork bead projects that I plan on doing, but um, that was really hard. And so I made a few polymer clay beads on these bobbins and then I realized they fit my white sewing machine perfectly. So I've just been using these as bobbins and it was like eight bucks or something for, or maybe 14. It wasn't much, but it was for 100 bobbins. I thought it was a great deal. And there are my six, count them, six seam rippers. So happy. This is gold right there. I threw a bone folder in here because I thought it'd be good for like when you're making a rice bag or um, a mask or something, you got to turn something right side out. You can get to, into the corners without poking through like I do if I use like a paintbrush handle, which is what I used yesterday and I poked through once. Um, so I threw that in there. And I got my Fabric Fun oil pastels in there, which I plan on using. And in here I have marking and measuring tools. So I've got my chalk markers, I've got my dressmaker's wheel. Um, I've got these little calipers that are for doing hems. And actually my mannequin has one of these on the bottom of it. I'm not, I don't think it's one of these that go to it. There's a separate one. And then a couple of random things that came, I think, with a subscription that somebody gave me. And some, um, uh, um, you know, retractable and fabric measuring tapes for measuring <laughs> bodies. And this drawer down here is really hard to open, so I have stuff I don't need to get to very often. Velcro, I think I showed you that already. Button cover, like uh, metal buttons that you can cover with fabric for custom things um, if you need to make custom buttons. Oh, I'm trying to stay out of camera. My shirt is so filthy. Um, so then let's move up. You know what? I'm going to move the camera a little bit. I'm going to move my janky chair out of the way. All right, and let's zoom right in there a little bit because there's nothing really up above that of consequence. Um, again, I'm going to try to stay out of camera, <laughs> out of shot. Um, I have this I thought was a grand deal. I bought this at Joann's once, and um, it's got the clear plastic bobbins, and I thought that, um, well, I had an old machine that was junk that, you know, fell apart after about a year, basically. It was one of those cheapos from a uh, big box store, and it took the plastic bobbins. They never really worked right with these bobbins, so I have been replacing my, I have a hand sewing box upstairs for mending, so I just replace with, like, these as I use them up. Um, I've taken a few bobbins out. I can actually use the top, these threads on the top thread on my sewing machine, but the bobbins just won't cut it. Uh, they're not the right kind, but even in the other machine they weren't right. This is a, was my mother-in-law's sewing box, and I went through and tested thread and put in what I could, so that's there for um, use, and if I don't have the color here, then I've got it on my display in my filming room that I can get in and grab. Um, then above it, I've got this little bin. All This is just some sewing elastic. I just have a random left now because I used almost all of it making masks and Lila making scrunchies and whatnot. I just have a pad of paper and a pen because sometimes you need to write down a measurement. You measure somebody, you measure something, like you're measuring windows or whatever. You can write down your measurement. I've got a brand new bag of craft thra uh, floss. And I got my pin cushions up top because, you know, you're going to grab those every single time you sit. So, and then here I have more bins of floss. Organi well, these are organized by color. And I have a bigger bin that wouldn't fit in here, which really greatly bothered me. And that's up higher. I'll pan up to it so you can see. Um, pay no attention to the purple, the leftover purple containers are up there. They have some random stamps and stuff in it, but I put my big bin of wooden spools up there. I use them for craft projects and staging photos and stuff. And then that tackle box underneath it is just all um, floss on bobbins. And that pretty much does it. Um, this is the sewing area. Um, it's not pretty, but it's organized and it works. Oh, and I'll show you. Well, first I'll show you this again, just so you can see. Oh my goodness. I really need to now. I've made such a mess doing this project that I need to like clean up the rest of it. There we go. So there you can see the little sewing nook there. Very organized, eh, not beautiful, but it will do the trick. And now let's go over to the cabinet that we organized at the beginning when we were so young earlier in this day <laughs> when this seemed like such an easy task. Um, there's the cabinet. I'm just gonna tighten my tripod. I think that's fine. I think we can see what's going on. Um, Top drawer, we got felt, and then I had to put some random things in the front, like shoelaces, because this is at least is an easy place. If someone needs a shoelace, I can say, go downstairs in the metal cabinet under my big table, top drawer, and there's a baggie of shoelaces, and, you know, that's easy for me to direct somebody to. Then I've got these decor tassels. I don't know what the heck to do with them. I didn't know what else to do with them. They're there, so they're there. And then this is all cheap craft felt. And then underneath, I have my fat quarters, all of them, and I can actually, I actually have some room for more. They're not super tight, so I can put some more in there. Uh, underneath that, I've got large panels of fabric, polished cotton uh, curtains that I've made that I no longer, that are no longer needed, leftover uh, decor fabric, 
I've got some pretty chintz over there that um, that I use sometimes for decor. Uh, this cute apron that I want to make, I've got self-adhesive felt. I actually have some big sheets of plastic canvas on the bottom here that I rarely w would get to. Um, then I've got another, I've got a couple shirts cut out that I think I'll probably just sew because they've been cut out for like 20 years. I probably don't fit them anymore, really. I mean, this is like three babies later <laughs> that are now teenagers. And, you know, the uh, stuff that actually has a, uh, a plan, like my coat lining fabric, because I've just been mending my lining. I've redid my pockets, but I didn't do them very well. So I need to redo them this winter or before this winter, ideally. And then in the bottom drawer, more curtains that I've sewn that are no longer um, being used and the you know, a thing I sewed for my, um, my display, one of my displays, craft fair displays, art fair displays, and just some, you know, random twill that I flipped over from a long time ago. And there you have it. There is all of my sewing stuff. Oh, I don't know how these how people do that have a really big sewing stash. That would be so overwhelming. This is overwhelming enough. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. If you know what that weird thing that I showed you in the middle of the video is for, that would be fantastic. I'm keeping it because it looks important, but uh, <laughs> let me know if you know. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.